Good morning, one and all. This is Dr. K. Archana, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of Anatomy, NTR College of Veterinary Science, Gandhavaram, under Svimeyu Tirupati, located in Andhra Pradesh, India. Today we are going to discuss about the scapula of the ox. This is the scapula of the ox. It is a flat, triangular bone situated on the anterior lateral aspect of the thoracic region. When you come to the direction, it is directed obliquely downwards and then forwards. This is a flat bone, a triangular bone, a roughly triangular bone. And this is having two surfaces. This is one surface and this is the other. This surface, which is facing away from the body, this is called as the lateral surface. And this surface, which is placed towards the body, this is called as the medial surface. So you have two surfaces, a lateral surface and the medial surface. Coming to the borders, it has three borders. This is the anterior border. This is the posterior border. And this is the dorsal border. The anterior border, posterior border, and the dorsal border. Coming to the angles, you have the anterior angle, the posterior angle, and the inferior angle. Anterior angle, posterior angle, and the inferior angle. Coming to the description of the surfaces and the borders and angles, the lateral surface is traversed by a spine due to which this surface is divided into two unequal areas. The spine, the scapular spine we call it, is dividing this surface into two unequal areas or fossils. The upper one above the spine, we are calling it as the supraspinous fossa. This is the supraspinous fossa. The supraspinous fossa lodges the muscle called as supraspinatus and the fossa beneath the spine is called as the infraspinous fossa. This fossa lodges a muscle called as infraspinatus. This surface also shows some lines below and this is for a muscle called as teres minor. So these lines are for the muscle called as teres minor. So here you have the infraspinatus and in here you have lines for teres minor. Coming to the scapular spine, the scapular spine ends in a process. This process is called acromion process. The acromion process, the black colored part what you are seeing here, is for a muscle called as deltoideus. The spine is wide in the center and this is for a muscle called as trapezius. So this is about the lateral surface of the scapula. Coming to the medial surface, the medial surface shows a shallow depression and a fossa that is called as a subscapular fossa. This subscapular fossa lodges a muscle called as subscapularis. On the surface, on the upper third of the surface, anteriorly you have a rough triangular area. This is for a muscle called as serratus cervicis. Posteriorly you have a line that is for serratus thoracis. So anteriorly you have the insertion of serratus cervices and posteriorly you have the insertion of serratus thoracis. Serratus cervices and serratus thoracis. That is about the medial surface of the scapula. Coming to the borders, this is the anterior border of the scapula which is convex above and then it is concave below. Convex above and concave below. The posterior border of the scapula is thicker 
and it presents the nutrient for amen for the passage of blood vessels and nerves. The posterior border shows the nutrient for amen for the passage of blood vessels and nerves. This is the dorsal border of the scapula. This is thicker and pitted. It carries the scapular cartilage in life. The cartilage on the medial surface gives attachment to a muscle called desromboideus. The scapular cartilage gives attachment to rhomboideus muscle. Then the angles of the scapula. This is called as the anterior angle of the scapula which is thinner. This is the posterior angle of the scapula which is thicker. And then this is the inferior angle of the scapula which carries a cavity. This is called as the glenoid cavity. This is a shallow articular depression. Now this glenoid cavity presents a notch. This notch is called as the glenoid notch. This is present anterolaterally. This is the glenoid cavity. This is the glenoid notch. Present anterolaterally on the scapula of ox. This is the tuber scapula, the red colored part what you are seeing here. This tuber scapula gives origin for a muscle called as biceps brachii. It also presents a process medially, the yellow colored part what you are seeing. This is called as the coracoid process. The coracoid process gives origin to a muscle called as coracobrachialis. This is the tuber scapula, origin of biceps brachii, and this is the coracoid process for coracobrachialis. So, in short, this is the lateral surface of the scapula. This is the spine, the scapular spine. This is the acromion process. This is the medial surface of the scapula. This is the anterior border of the scapula, the posterior border of the scapula, the dorsal border of the scapula, the anterior angle, the posterior angle and the inferior angle. This is the glenoid cavity for articulation of the humerus. This is the glenoid notch. This is the tuber scapula and this is the coracoid process.